my experiences are real and not just a kind of imagination or illusion of the brain. Could it be a trick of the mind, what I experience? Now that's really important because even people who have been following my reading my books and um, and following me on YouTube, uh, they have these sort of questions which keep coming up. Now I just need to make clear there is a difference between mediums. I, I listen to a medium, whereas a medium is reliant on what they hear, what they are being told, the impressions they receive, and so on. Um, an out-of-body experiencer is somebody who actually leaves this physical dimension behind and establishes full waking consciousness on another level of reality. <clears throat> and this level of reality is very, um, is very real. It's as real as a physical reality. In fact, because consciousness becomes a lot more lucid and clearer, it becomes more real than real. So the question the person, people ask, could it be a trick of the mind? And the answer to that is clearly not. Because if that was the case, then you could argue that uh, what we experience in real life, in physical life, is equally a, a, a trick of the mind. But because I'm fully awake, I'm fully aware, I'm, I've got all my visual senses, I can talk to people, I can smell, I can eat, I can do anything I can do here, but much more than that, because I can also fly, I can communicate with people telepathically, and I can read their thoughts to such an extent that they actually take me into a place when they when they talk about an experience they had, when they talk to me about um, their family, uh, their wives, and I can actually see through their eyes and see through their mind what they're actually talking about. So the experiences are much, much clearer and much more profound than they are in the physical life. Now, the other thing is, of course, um, it's not only that, but because I have been meditating for the last 50 years, I acquired the ability to, to keep focused, to, to uh, focus on the lucidity and allow it to extend almost, um, uh, well, way beyond normal, because most out-of-body experiences and most near-death experiences are relatively short. But... When you focus your awareness, you can actually extend the thing. And what is very helpful when you do that, the longer you do that, you recognize that you're not in a different world, but the, that you are on home ground. That the place where you are, you are a little bit closer to your home uh, environment, which is uh, higher consciousness. And then it becomes clear when you are in this state of mind that the physical world we spend our normal life in is actually a little bit like a dream almost. It doesn't feel so real. And I mentioned before, I spent, once I spent six hours in this out of body state and it became so real and so lucid that I, I wondered whether I had died and I, I kept going back to my body at regular intervals to, ch to, to actually check whether I was still alive. So, so that is just the background of these out-of-body experiences because then, of course, you encounter a lot of things which are rarely talked about because unless you see things, unless you experience things, in real, in, in real life, as a person, a medium would probably find it very difficult to pick up on these things because they don't necessarily make sense. And the people on the other side probably rather avoid talking about these things because they are so difficult to explain. Um, little things like, for example, I noticed how people's physical appearance changed from one moment to another, 
simply because they had different thoughts or different emotions which affected their appearance uh, to the extent that some people actually became uh, looked quite sick you know when they when they touched on a subject which was uncomfortable for them we find that here on the physical level but to a much lesser degree so on the astral level, thought rules supreme and we are very much influenced by what uh, happens in our mind. And not only that, but our external environment is influenced as well. So for example, let's say we are walking through a, uh, a lovely garden on the astral plane and suddenly we remember that uh, a, a, child, a childhood trauma or some really unpleasant experience in our past. And as we look around, suddenly some of the flowers start wilting and and suddenly it becomes rather gray around us. Now we find this here on this planet when we go through a depression, no matter how beautiful our environment is, we find it looks rather grim even if the sun shines. You know, we're not feeling the beauty of it. And on the astral level, this is much more enhanced. So we can see, we can see, uh, we perceive our environment differently. And even when other people are around, our emotion can be so strong that we have an effect on the environment and they get a little bit of a, uh, uh, a dose of what our feelings are like. This is a really big subject because uh, our the content of our mind determines the environment we we uh, create for ourselves and depending on on who we are and what kind of people we are when we for example are mostly negative we will actually uh, be drawn to environment which is rather dull and and black and white or gray lacking color and lacking vegetation and things like that and so we have these um these multi-dimensional realities where people uh, gravitate towards depending on their personality on their feeling on their spiritual makeup so that's why the uh, astral world is is a multi-dimensional place which has got unlimited levels uh, of uh, states of consciousness. The other thing is, of course, we create things uh, here in our physical life. Um, and what we create here, while we're still alive, is referred to as the near Earth astral levels. And they come about because lots of our thoughts are focused around everyday normal realities, ev everyday things like work, uh, play, uh, politics, you have whatever you we think about as, as a collective uh, group of consciousness, that is actually also playing out on the astral level. And the thing is, these near astral levels are basically a copy of our physical level. And people who die coming from this normal sort of, let's say, earthly type of mindset, they will find themselves in this near earth level. And when I said in the past that some people don't realize that they have died, it's because there is no distinction, there, is no, there are no clues that we are living in a different world, because the lower astral level is like our earth level everything we have here is also there. Now, inevitably, most people who pass on and they find themselves on these Earth-like levels, they will be greeted by their relatives, friends or whoever, and they will make sure that they are introduced into their new state of, of life and then they will properly don't spend a lot of time there at all because they feel naturally drawn to an environment which is in tune with their inner feeling. And that very often may, uh, is, is very likely a very positive, a beautiful surrounding, you know. So most astral travelers, when they have an out-of-body experience, they will, they will uh, uh, gravitate uh, around these uh, near-earth levels because that's where in the daytime 
where their mindset has been centered. And this is very difficult really to go beyond that. And therefore there's a lot of um, descriptions of astral travel uh, around these lower dimensional levels. Now we can change, once we have got a little bit of experience, we can change and transcend these lower astral levels and go to a state which is much higher. And various out-of-body experiences devise various techniques. One technique is to dis dislodge the habitual mind from their uh, from their habit of being in the lower in the in the earth-like level. And there are various tricks. Some some astral travelers they say, oh, all you need to do is simply spin around. That disorientates your your everyday mind and then you find when you stop spinning you find yourself in a more natural environment which is more congruent to your true state of being and that very often is in a much higher dimensional level the other technique which i sort of propagated is uh, simply to to carry on meditation or chant a mantra the mantra i use has been the om chant and i discovered that the Om Mantra is a direct line to uh, the higher state of consciousness, to, to the creative uh, aspect of, you know, the, the core aspect of creativity of, the, of, let's say, the God consciousness, if you like, because uh, that is a very, very powerful mantra. And it's, it's there for a reason that has been uh, mentioned in, in ancient occult literature coming from the East. And this mantra has got various effects. If our mind is still sort of uh, centered around our earth-like experience, it can literally lift us off the ground. And I tried it several times by chanting it once. You literally fly up into the air and it can be so powerful that you fly out into outer space or you end up in a completely different environment. It doesn't always work. Some people just simply are dislocated into a different place on the plane where, where they are at. But there are different techniques which we can use to, to leave our lower astral environment and, and go to, to higher places. So that's a, that is the first question. Now, the thing is, it's not a trick of the mind. It cannot be. Because if it was, then this life we lead here in the physical world would be a trick of the mind much more readily because everything is much more real. And, and also the other thing is the people we meet over there, they are sovereign entities, they are individuals. We can talk to them. We don't know who they are. They have their own agenda they bring into play exactly like people do here. So if I, I had a lot of experiences with my mother who died and I could see how she, uh, how, how she progressed and other people I knew I met and I could see their individuality, uh, their independence, how we interacted with each other. My, my brother-in-law was a very good example who progressed and took on a completely new life uh, over there. Thank you.